for a while now, I've been looking for something. I've been looking for the heart of the marble machine. I've been looking for something that makes me want to take this model and put it into the real world. And I think I just found it. And to understand what I found and why I'm so excited that I found it, we have to ask ourselves the question, what is moment of inertia? To put it simply, moment of inertia is resistance to change of an object's rotational motion. An easy way of understanding this is to look at linear momentum. So this orange square has a resistance to change through mass and friction. When the small car drives into the orange block, the resistance to change of the orange block will slow the car down. The small car itself also has a resistance to change. It's the speed and the mass of the small car. So what happens when this big trailer drives into the same orange block? The trailer has a larger resistance to change, which means it will push the orange block further along. When it comes to the rotation of a wheel, it also has a resistance to change. To increase the rotational resistance to change, we can one, increase mass, two, increase speed, or three, increase size of the outer diameter. By increasing the resistance to change, we have increased the moment of inertia. In the formula for moment of inertia, we find radius squared. It means that a doubling of the diameter is a fourfold increase of inertia. Or as my friend Rudy said, when it comes to moment of inertia, outer diameter is king. Thanks to this r squared part of the inertia formula, we can take this smaller flywheel and make it larger and we can reduce the weight and the speed and still get more moment of inertia. So the larger flywheel is a really efficient design. But if this is a more efficient design, shouldn't history be full of machines with really large flywheels? Yes, and it is. If we take a look at mechanical machinery from the Industrial Revolution, one special characteristic is standing out in each and one of these machines. The giant flywheel. In proportion to everything else, these flywheels are gigantic. The massive moment of inertia of these flywheels provided these machines with a vital function, a stable and steady operation speed. And as cool as that function is in itself, it also look completely awesome. I absolutely love the aesthetics and identity of all these machines. This is true form from function. At the time, these machines were the cutting edge of technology. And I kind of think it's cool that these large flywheels brought the industrial revolution that kind of leads to our modern society in which we're living today, which brings me to my machine, the marble machine. The marble machine is a unique modern example of a machine that needs moment of inertia and a lot of it, but why? Well, moment of inertia, as we have learned, is resistance to change in rotational tempo, which means resistance to change of the music tempo, of the music of the marble machine. So the more moment of inertia we have, the tighter the music will be. And playing tight music has been one of my most important goals with this machine. So I was thinking, hmm, Perhaps I want even more moment of inertia. Hmm. So I went from one meter to one and a half meter and I was like, that's it. Larger than this, we would not be able to transport the machine. So I thought this was the maximum, but then I saw one of the pictures of the industrial era machines where they had clearly assembled the flywheel in sections. And I was like, oh my God, we can do that as well. So are you starting to see where we're going with all this? Perhaps you have already seen it. Standing over here, the future. <laughs> Let me introduce to you all two and a half meter diameter. Boom. This is the machine I want to build. This is the machine I want to make music for. This is the machine that inspires me to finish this project. <laughs> It feels like I found the heart of the Marble Machine and it feels like for the first time the new machine looks cooler than the prototypes I built before this machine. And talking about cool, I want to say thanks to all the 30 new backers and everyone who has upgraded their support this week. Thank you all so much. But is this just a gimmick? Am I just thinking, wow, larger wheel, cool? No, 
For example, the industry era machines didn't try to look cool at all. They were designed with only functionality and economy in mind, so a big flywheel for those machines were not a gimmick, it was functionality. This change has so many positive side effects for the whole machine. The first positive side effect from this change is that thanks to this large wheel, I feel the machine is cool enough as it is with the wheel, which means that I don't have to overcompensate with a lot of details everywhere. I can reduce complexity elsewhere, which will help me finish the project. The second positive side effect is that this big wheel creates this large control station in the middle, which means Evelina, the fourth band member, doesn't have to stand over here. She can come into the control station together with me. And we create this kind of Daft Punk look here, where Avelina is playing keyboard and pulling levers right next to me, which is a very dynamic look. So I really like the fact that we have a symmetric view with drummer, two musicians and bass player on the sides of the machine like this. A third positive side effect is that the scarcest resource of the machine is the power input. So far I thought that only I could pedal the machine, but thanks to the fact that I get another musician up with me in the control center, I can double the amount of pedals and we can actually have two musicians pedaling the machine at the same time, which means that we have doubled the power input, which was one of the things that kept me really worried about the functionality of this thing. And the last positive side effect this has caused is I think I found the visual aesthetic identity of this machine. And I think the visual identity of this machine should be industrial revolution. I think having industrial revolution, or as my friend Barnaby Dixon calls it, industrial evolution, as a guiding star when it comes to the aesthetics of everything we have to design for the machine, will be such a fun aesthetic to work with, and it gives a blueprint for how everything should be designed. Super important note here is that it's not steampunk. Steampunk is a fake genre. I never liked steampunk. Steampunk as an aesthetic just feels metal spray painted plastic tubes. <laughs> it feels fake. Steampunk is form without function. Industrial revolution is form from function. So it's not steampunk. I have more of a feeling that it's dream punk. <laughs> I don't know. Each week I'm trying to refine the MVP, the maximum virtual product of the marble machine. So this is the CAD file and this is our maximum virtual product for this week. So each week from now on we will add a new generation of the maximum virtual product so you can really see how the project is evolving. And talk about evolving, we have 558 backers for Vintegata now, so thank you every single person whose name is shown next to me here on the screen, your support means so much. Thank you so much. And is this flywheel just not a gimmick that is horrible to carry around on the tour? Absolutely not. This flywheel is the heart and soul and lungs of the Marm machine. This flywheel makes the music tight and makes the music something you want to dance to and makes the people furthest back on the row of the concert truly understand how this machine works at a glance. I try to keep my own excitement levels down because excitement isn't finishing a complicated project like this. But yeah, this gets me really excited. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week. Ciao.